I'm here, I'm straight, I'm putting up a gate. Hi, welcome to my channel. Um, you know, I'm just so baffled by this whole new autism, autism spectrum disorder. I don't know if I said in the last video, um, I discovered that they changed the disorder. The autism that the ADA was, uh, you know, put up for, I feel like this new autism spectrum disorder would be like a whole bunch of people cutting off their legs so they can get a fake leg, you know, they can just self-diagnose. No, I'm really handicapped. Cut off my legs. Therefore, I'll need fake legs and a wheelchair, and then I can start bitching at the ableists. The people that you make fun of, these ableists, are you have no idea what they've been through. Oh my God. Calling uh, severe autistic parents ableists. We're talking about kids that smear poo-poo on the walls. <laughs> you know, they can't make an appointment, go on a date, take a trip to another country like I've seen on some of these new ASD videos. Neurodiversity, we're all neurodiverse. We all have a brain. It all works, and it all works differently. I blame the doctors for this. I blame the psychologist and the psychiatrist, and I blame the regular doctors now because this is a big old scam being put on. This is just more, more ammunition for their little uh, gay dragon destroying society. I'm going to read you a letter of why I think it's wrong for uh, these new ASD people that have amazing channels, I might add. I told my husband, you know, I feel like Peter McKinnon could be autistic. I feel like Casey Neistat could be autistic by the new standards. I hope they don't put up a video like that. That ADA law was put into a place for people that truly had special needs. The new, you know, uh, neurodiverse... You know, they fit right in with these transgender. You could just change the word. And I've seen more that they're they're all in on the, uh, you know, trans rights or humans rights. Okay, so I'm going to read you. I, I um, On my Facebook, I belong to a group for uh, pay special needs uh, organ kids, which I tried contacting them. They were not interested. This is not their fight. And I'm like, the money all comes out of, out of the same pot. While they're spending money to transgender somebody's kid, your kid's not getting some really needed care that they need. That's how I feel. Anyways, so I had seen this post that uh, in Portland, Oregon, their funding is being cut, and I thought I'm going to read you the post, and you'll see what I'm talking about. The State of Special Education in Portland, show me the money. This was from November 1st, 2023. And uh, I didn't even read the first part of their series. Maybe I'll go read that. But right now, I just want to bring this up. Okay, I want to do this article. We spotlight record-breaking education funds approved by the Oregon legislator. Teacher and staff contract negotiations and what a... Uh, and what a pricey report on the strengths and shortcomings of Portland public schools, special education departments revealed. Ginger Huizer, <laughs> Ginger Huizer's entire special education team is new this year. The Atkinson Elementary Learning Center special education teacher says her Southeast Portland school speech language pathologist occupational therapist, school psychologist, program administrator, and even records clerk all left at the end of 2002-2023. So they have a whole new crew in there for their little, uh, I wonder if that's better like that, for their, for their ideas, their socialist agenda. I, this is all part of it. <laughs> Okay, when I see so many le people leave special education, it's hard because it's hard on the kids, Hooser says. That's, what, that's what's really heartbreaking to me is, is to watch that take place. That's what's really heartbreaking to me is to watch that take place with our students. 
the six-year special education teacher, also says her caseload is already full. A bad sign at the beginning of the year as more children tend to get identified for services as the year progresses, she says. With so few staff to address so many needs, Huizer says we're starting the year with a lack of services being supported as a result. The 2023-24 school year has the potential to be pivotal for long-standing problems in the special education in Portland. With a record-breaking $10.2 billion state budget for K-12 education, long-overdue contracts for teachers, paraeducators, and specialists, increasing awareness of neurodiversity... I didn't even see that earlier. I didn't read this whole article earlier. I'm reading it all now. I skimmed it earlier. Okay. Increasing awareness of neurodiversity and a commitment to equity. Some hope that Portland public schools will finally turn the page on decades of special education dysfunction. I don't know. When my kids were in special education, it's been about 20 years. It was wonderful. After we passed the ADA... They had, you know, they had the services. It was great. What in the heck has happened? We didn't, we don't live in Portland, but, you know, special education dysfunction, I'm guessing they're wanting you to think it's everywhere. Okay. Or it could be another year in a long string of failures by a district that has been repeatedly criticized as too siloed, too segregated, too antiquated, and too resistant to change. Maybe it's all the change they're doing that's making things wrong. In August, PDX Parent shared stories from parents and district administrators on the challenges and solutions in PPS special education. In this edition, we look at how this year's new laws will impact a district that one that one. In August... Oh, I guess maybe this is from the magazine, that PDX. Or they're talking about story. Anyways, here we go. In August, PDX Parent shared stories from parents and district administrators on the challenges and solutions in PPS special education. In this edition, we look at how this year's new laws will impact a district that once report impact a district that one report called significantly departmentalized, leading to a lack of coherence across the system. I'm just going to zip over this because I'm already at 10 minutes. I might cut a lot of that out too. Uh, Okay, this is about the legislative changes. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop right there because if every Tom, Dick and Harry can uh, diagnose himself with autism, then the money, what happened? That's weird. Oh, Okay. My computer is full of memory. I got to go delete some stuff. So that's the end of today's video. The more money they're spending on uh, kids that are just, it, it reminds me of the ADD kids of back, tw- you know, 20, 30 years ago. They have to have something to, uh, you know, label all these kids. I guess maybe back then there they were thinking it's ADD. Now they're thinking, oh, we made a mistake. Let's call it autism and we'll div- give them a different kind of drugs. I have no idea. And what an adult gains from being diagnosed autistic, I don't have a clue. Because the whole reason the ADA is put there and the autism was brought in, in my understanding, is that to get them to, to know as much as they can. So when they are an adult, they have some basic skills, reading, writing, you know, um, being in society, being around other kids. And it was also told to us that that's a way for other kids to get used to being around special needs kids. It was really impressed on me because I remember that very clearly. One of their big pushing points for us to say 
was that, well, if we put the marginal kids in with the severe special needs kids, the marginal kids will start acting more like the severe special need kids and they won't, you know, develop and advance as much as they could. Well, looking at the way things are now, I see that the opposite happened. I think in those mental institutions, they knew. You bring the, um, you know, you, you bring the, this, all the special needs kids into the classroom, then the normal kids are going to start picking up on stuff that the severe special kids need, you know, have. And that's why, um, and I think that's why this is happening. Now, I may be wrong. And I am willing to admit if I'm completely wrong about this somewhere down the road, you can say, well, she was she was going down the wrong trail. But at least I know something is wrong and I'm on a trail. Uh, I'm not going to I just don't want to be. Uh, I can't imagine when uh, Dr. Phil finally woke up. He finally woke up, you know, a couple maybe about a week ago now. A psychologist living in the middle of this stuff. Just now speaking out, you know, about the, the transgendered kids, not about the autistic, you know, the new, the new age autistics. I just really have a problem with them. The reason I have the most problem is the way I hear of them talk about true special needs mothers, you know. You know, they're talking about mothers of children, of, of mothers that have children that don't even talk. And they think these mothers are just pressuring them and pushing them along around, you know. No, these are kids that need somebody to help them think. Yeah, I, you know, it's the doctors. The doctors have convinced people and, uh, and disabled people are getting left right, right in the dust. Pew. The psychologist and the psychiatrist are brainwashing people to think they're crazy and they don't know what their kids need. And yeah, you know, so this is no personal attack on anyone. You've been brainwashed. And it's going to be a sad, sad state of affairs when you wake up and realize it. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be bad. There are things in life to be uh, depressed about, and there's just not enough antidepressants in the world that's going to help that. That's how it is. Okay.